Okay, uh, folks, uh, good morning and, and thanks for taking the time uh, to uh, join this webinar. Okay, so uh, blockchain technology. So this is a presentation that myself and John uh, have collated together. So the purpose of the webinar is to introduce blockchain technology to the community here and to our uh, member companies. And in this, we're looking to explore its potential for use in uh, the Irish manufacturing industry. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, what is blockchain and why it's so topical right now? The benefits of blockchain, how it works. There are a range of different types of platforms. Uh, so we'll briefly go over them. I will discuss uh, the applications within manufacturing and from that, how IMR can help companies who wish to pursue uh, this further. So what is blockchain? So it, effectively, it's a combination of technologies, distributed computing technologies that allow objects to be transferred in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So what do we mean by objects within the blockchain? So uh, an object can be anything that can be digitally represented. So it can be a document, it could be a design spec, a video, or process parameters from an actual manufacturing process associated with, that pro with a product. So those, that data or details are passed from one party to another in what's called a transaction. So the transaction ensures the secure transfer of ownership of that data or that digital artifact between two parties. The original idea or concept was developed by an individual or group of people uh, under the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. That's a pseudonym. The individual has never been identified and their objective was to create a platform that enabled peer-to-peer -peer transfer of currency in a way that could not be controlled by a financial institution or a government. So essentially there are no, no new technical components, IT components in blockchain. The genius of Nakamoto was to use existing technologies in a new way to achieve uh, their objective. What does blockchain give us? Why is, it, why is it so interesting and compelling to some organizations? So, so blockchain can simplify, reduce cost, and expedite a lot of existing business practices through ensuring trust, accountability, and transparency. And by eliminating the requirement for a traditional uh, trusted third party or intermediary, intermediary, it, it effectively speeds up data transfer. Almost any digital artifact can be used in a blockchain. So there's no real limit to the potential use case. So it has applications across a wide, wide range of uh, different business environments. So in short, it does away with intermediaries, as we said, so uh, potentially banks, uh, legal practitioners, resellers, trading intermediaries by supporting a peer-to-peer -peer transaction network. Because of that, it is potentially compelling uh, in terms of uh, businesses using it for improved efficiency. There are many different database designs out there and configurations that you'd all be very familiar with. So SQL databases, NoSQL, real-time databases. So blockchain doesn't create a new type of database. Rather, it describes how a database can be used in a different way. It's not a cryptocurrency, which is probably the, the topic that you hear most about with blockchain. Rather, it's the platform on which cryptocurrencies are created or used. So think of cryptocurrency and blockchain as having the same relationship as a computer application running on an operating system. And although it is secure with obvious redundancy, it is not a replacement for standard enterprise databases or archives. So it has its place, just like many other the IT and ERP systems have its place, have their place as well. And it's just a case of trying to understand what that place is. So where does a blockchain platform make sense? So where it makes sense is where companies or entities need different applications run on in, in different environments. That's where it makes sense. If a company has an application that's run internally on one system, that's probably not the best use of a blockchain uh, capability. If updates are limited to a single party, then existing database structures uh, make more sense. You don't need a blockchain architecture. But where parties may or may not know each other, let alone trust each other, blockchain does have a significant potential to, to improve efficiency through those parties. It also has a functional requirement of it. It can achieve very low latency. So the speed of transaction is something that's important to your business, and then it is something worth considering. Uh, some of the typical use cases, so I, I'm sure you're, you're all familiar with the, the fintech and, and how it has applied that. But 
it has the potential uh, to be impactive and disruptive to a range of other different business models. And it can, or it, it could have as big an impact on, on business in the future as the original internet had on uh, individuals. So there are multiple blockchain platforms being developed and deployed across all, all, all examples, or all sectors, excuse me. Um, and it has a big impact, as I said, on the financial domain. There are some key themes within blockchain that are very compelling uh, in terms of fintech and other areas. So it removes the need for a trusted intermediary. It supports peer-to-peer -peer transactions, as we said. It enables transaction automation, and it enables near instantaneous transaction settlement. It also ties transactions to real-time events or metrics. So for example, car insurance could be tied to uh, the individual's driving behavior. Um, so the better the behavior, the more your insurance costs go down. In health, patient data management, so the sharing of data amongst multiple health providers for an individual could be facilitated, as could drug traceability uh, in the market or even disease prevention. From an energy perspective, it can support wholesale energy distribution where customers purchase from a grid and bypass retailers, or it can support peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. And even within the supply chain, through greater efficiency, it can deliver greater efficiencies through uh, transparency, Goods can be tracked autonomously, settlements automated, uh, providence and authenticity checks can be done automatically. So, and it can support fraud detection. So there's a, there's a range of different uh, benefits uh, across a range of different applications that blockchain can support. So how it works. In the context of you know, this short webinar, it's impossible to describe this uh, within a single slide. But what we'll talk about here are the main elements. So I mean, a blockchain has three primary components. It's got a distributed database that maintains a list of all transactions that have occurred between uh, two parties or participants. It has nodes which host the database copies and present access points to the end users. And finally, it has a mechanism that describes how a database is to be maintained. The fundamental record in the database is a block. Um, and this block contains the digital identity of two parties, the digital representation of the object, by the object, again, we mean whatever parties are transferring between themselves. The blocks are then linked together using a digital hash function or an encryption code. And this helps create a chain of blocks or a blockchain. So in order to ensure that all copies of the database are identical, a mechanism you, uh, is used called what we call a consensus mechanism. And this mechanism is a mechanism that uh, achieves the necessary agreement between between all the parties or all the, within the peer network around a particular value in that blockchain. So everybody validates it. So each blockchain implementation will use a number of different standard mechanisms to do this, to reach consensus. So you'll hear terms like proof of work or proof of stake, or uh, sometimes it can be simply managed through a, a governance node within the blockchain itself. So it's flexible and it depends on the different type of platform that you wish to use. So let's look at some of the more recognizable uh, blockchain platforms that are out there uh, currently. So, so the first we'll talk about is uh, a public blockchain. So, and as the name suggests, a public blockchain is a permissionless blockchain. Anybody can effectively join uh, a block this blockchain network, meaning they can read, write, or participate in the public blockchain. There is uh, an associated cost uh, in terms of it's done generally by uh, transaction. And, and to basically engage with the public blockchain, you merely use a public available API. And that is generally used by developers to uh, integrate whatever they wish to do into a, a blockchain architecture of this type. User IDs are then protected and managed through public private key. So this is probably the most widely, widely used right now, uh, certainly the most common in the market. It supports uh, Bitcoin, which I'm sure everyone has heard of and the Ethereum open source network as well. So this is a, a community of practitioners um, that use uh, public blockchains. So permission blockchains, and again, as the name <coughs> suggests, it's a private blockchain. Uh, permission blockchains are based on access controls, which restrict the people who can actually participate in the network. And there are one or more entities which control the network, and this leads to uh, reliance on third parties to transact. So you would typically see this in uh, industry-specific applications. So 
there may be a group of companies within the pharmaceutical industry that would use this type of architecture or in, in another different industrial segment. So Hyperledger would probably be the most uh, widely recognizable version or platform. Um, and it has many, many implications or in implementations uh, across from finance, pharmaceutical and food. And generally the cost is borne by the, the consortium that create the, the private blockchain. Uh, so how this uh, is applied in, in, in terms of manufacturing. So you can see here just a number of different uh, areas in which it, it is actually actively being, being used at the moment. And these are just some examples. I suppose manufacturing does lag fintech in terms of uh, deployment, but there are huge opportunities and new business models within the manufacturing segment that could support this. Uh, so exa for example, if you take supply chain, the automation uh, and traceability of transaction settlements uh, is, uh, is an opportunity. Lowering costs and improving inventory would be the benefit. Uh, it can support direct producer to consumer transactions. Uh, industrial automation or factory automation. So production equipment on the floor can find and negotiate the best price for its consumables or the bomb that keeps that part or that machine running. And it can confirm delivery and authorized payment without human intervention. So a big efficiency there those individuals could be utilized then for more valuable activities. Uh, provenance would be another example. So a manufacturer in Ireland can deliver its products to a distribution channel with full traceability. Each individual product and its uh, constituent parts are identifiable. Uh, and then each step of the manufacturing process can be audited and the full suite of product information is automatically delivered to the product, with the product to the customer and, and it cannot be refuted. So you get the data that's very relevant to your party or product ID, uh, giving you more confidence that um, you have what you paid for. Another example would be warranty compliance. So the use of an ownership of product post-production may be tracked and used to verify water warranty compliance in the marketplace. So these are just some examples. And on the right-hand side of the slide here, we're just showing current initiatives that we've observed uh, on the island of Ireland, how blockchain is being investigated and applied. Those. Uh, types of scenarios. So if we were to look in a little more detail on one or two of these type of applications, uh, so what, what we're just trying to highlight here is how blockchain could be used to support, as we briefly discussed in the previous slide, you know, improved product, product traceability or effectively the creation of a digital passport for a product. So we're just outlining here a flow of how product can be manufactured, how it's distributed then to an, an individual. So Product traceability, uh, both within factories and in their overall supply chain, require huge levels of compliance validation. And any, anybody on, on, on the line here who works in farm and med device or ICT industry will, will attest to that. So this compliance obligation requires large levels of manual data integrity into generally specialist ERP systems to support the creation of what we call an evidence of compliance uh, historian. And, and, and that is a huge time and human resource sink for many, many organizations. So this slide here is just explaining how blockchain uh, could support the development of a digital passport. So when the end customer receives the goods, uh, the physical product would be accompanied with a, what we call a digital artifact of the part of the product. That artifact could contain critical process information or pertaining only to that uh, part ID, such as possibly temperature and pressure from the manufacturing process itself. And that information could then be downloaded uh, from the blockchain uh, to the individual. Uh, this digital route of trust could serve as a repository for all critical information uh, for this product and the process which manufacture it, essentially eliminating the need for extensive follow-on audits. So there could be a huge productivity benefit uh, to an organization by applying this type of Another area where it could benefit, in, which is rather topical at the moment, would be clean energy. So in the area of uh, green energy, uh, blockchain technology, is, it can change uh, the way we do business in terms of how we purchase our, our power. So for example, at the moment, uh, photovoltaic cells, wind turbines, and power plants can all be used for power generation. Uh, users can, end users can all, or consumers can use all three forms. But using a blockchain with smart metering technology, a tamper-proof ledger of how much power uh, has been generated in terms of green or maybe less carbon-friendly methods uh, can, be, 
completed, enabling end users or consumers, in this case on the slide, nodes three and six, uh, to be sure as to where their supply comes from. Blockchain can, can facilitate this further by the creation of smart contracts, which can be used to facilitate point-to-point -point purchase and trading on excess power. When users purchase green energy from a supplier, with the use of a smart con contract, relevant third parties will be able to issue certificates to users and power plants, which will effectively be able to recognize their use of green and clean energy using a blockchain application. So it's, it's instantly verifiable and validated. So. so these would just be you know, some everyday examples of how both in the energy and supply uh, chain, how uh, blockchain can benefit um, companies. So let's uh, quickly recap. So uh, this was, as, as I said, a brief introduction to blockchain. Uh, I hope it's provided uh, some context to the technology and how it could be applied. Some areas as you're reading through this to take note, note of when considering blockchain as a technology. So you do need to be mindful of the fact that in a sense, blockchain is relinquishing control in that you're allowing the system to validate amendments to data. So it, it is very, very efficient in terms of that. But um, it is a case of understanding that that is the uh, a consideration that has to be looked at. It's an IT system, and like many IT systems, identity and users need to be uh, managed. Um, and as again with all IT systems, there may be endpoint vulnerabilities. And by that, I mean you do have to access the blockchain through laptops or IT devices. These obviously need to be secure. It's not up to the blockchain platform to manage that, but it is up to the IT system that's integrating into it. It is a rapidly and dynamically moving um, technology. It's evolving over time. And as such, standards are still being developed uh, to support that. And scale deployments outside of fintech are rather scarce, particularly in the manufacturing world. But that's also an opportunity. And it's an opportunity that uh, both IMR and other organizations are looking to support companies on. So in, in conclusion, I hope you've enjoyed this, this brief overview of what blockchain is. Those of you who wish to or are already using blockchain technology, IM, IMR would like to engage you to explore how your, explore how your initiatives uh, may help yourselves and other parties. So we're open to a conversation. IMR can facilitate that through either one-on-one -on -one, uh, engagements or through our community of practice. We've got experience in blockchain in, in developing white papers, uh, technical simulations, proof of concepts, and prototyping. And if that's of interest, then we'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you on next steps. So uh, thank you very much for your time.